obviously it also takes a little bit more processing but sometimes the results are worth it like that oh my gosh what the freak Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about Control Net. I'm going to be discussing what its uses are, how you can apply it to your videos, and obviously how to install it on your PC. And if you don't have a PC, I'm going to teach you how to use it in Google Colab. If you want to go that route, it's super simple, literally one click and you're right in there. So let's get right into it. Also, please like, comment and subscribe. It really helps me out. Thank you. All right, so on this page, it teaches us how to install it. I'm gonna put all these things in the description below. So it says some users may need to install the CV2 library before using it. Let's just go ahead and install it just in case. So you're gonna copy this. You're gonna be in the folder where you have your stable diffusion. So up here, just type in CMD, enter. You're gonna get this window that pops up and then you're just gonna paste this and then press enter. As soon as you're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and open Stable Diffusion. Once you're in Stable Diffusion, you're gonna go into Extensions. Then you're gonna go to Install from URL. And right here, you're gonna be pasting this link. It will be in the description again. And then you press Install. I think I already installed it, so it might not do anything. And then you come back to here where it says Install. You press Check for Updates just to make sure you update it right here. I'm actually behind. When you check for updates and then you press Apply and Restart UI. Once you do that, you're going to need the models. So once you download these, you go back into your Stable Diffusion folder. You go to Extensions. You go to SD Web UI Control Net. And you go into Models and you paste them in here. And then once you're done with that, you come down here and you should see something down here that says Control Net. Your model should be loaded up. If not, then you can reload right here. And then all the models you just downloaded should be right here. To use Control Net and Stable Diffusion through Google Colab, just click on the link I put in the description. You put open with Google Colab. Make sure that you save this to your drive, save copy to drive. And once that's saved, this is very simple is like so easy. You just look for right here. They already have some models. Let's just choose this one right under where it says uh, anything V3. You take away these hashtags and it's going to allow it to run the code. And all you got to do is just click up here and it's going to run. Once that runs, it's going to give you a link. You get the link, you open stable diffusion and control lab and essentially you have all the settings that I'm gonna go through in a bit. I wanna to explain to you basically what each model does. All, all these do something different and have their own purpose. It's good to be familiar with all of these. Here are the different names of each model and I will go over what some of them do. I don't know what all of them do, but I will go over the ones that I do know some information on. The model Kenny makes an outline of the original image as you see right here, and then it generates something new but it follows very much the outline that was created from the original image. HED does something very similar. As you can see, this looks different than the way Canny does outlines. So it also gives you different results because of this. Open Pose basically looks at an image of the subject and tries to mimic the pose. And then it generates something new in that same exact pose. Depth basically makes a depth map of the original image and create something new that is based off that depth map. Normal mode tries to detect the volume of the subject in the image and generate something based off of that. Scribble basically allows you to draw something and it will generate something off of that original drawing. And as you can see here, you can create some very, very cool stuff. MLSD is mainly for architecture. This is not meant for generating characters. It's more meant for anything that has straight lines like, you know, a house or a room. As you can see, this is a powerful tool that allows you to push a little bit more of the style, but still keep the shape and even some of the details from the original image. You can use any model, but in this case, I'm using the Protogen Anime model. I'll put a link in the description in case you want to download it. I'm going to put an image of Barret from Final Fantasy. So you got to make sure that the dimensions are right. This is a one by one image. So 512 by 512 works. Uh, you got to enable it. If you don't enable it, it's not going to do anything. The denoising strength is a bit high, so I'm just going to lower it a bit because I don't want it to go too crazy. Maybe like a six to start with. And then you have to make sure that you pick 
one of these models here. I'm gonna pick Canny for now. And over here, make sure that you pick the exact same one, Canny. And then you can choose any of these two. For me, I never really saw too much of a difference between these two. So I'm just gonna stick with whatever was there already on default. Canvas width and height size, you wanna make sure that is in the same ratio as the width and height up here. It doesn't have to be the exact number, but it has to be the exact ratio. So make sure you do that. If you have low VRAM, you can choose this and this will help you out. Yeah, and then it should be ready to go. Let's generate something. All right, so it generated this. And then as you, you'll see right here, how cool is this? It basically made lines and pretty much on the edges of his body. And then the AI tries to follow this to create an image. I'm actually going to, let me actually bring in some more CFG scale to give it a little bit more contrast, more details. This also will affect the results, the height and the width of this. So if you bring it a little higher, you're gonna get some different results. Obviously it also takes a little bit more processing, but sometimes the results are worth it like that. Oh my gosh, what the freak. Look at that. That is amazing. That is sick. Let's actually test the uh, HED, HED, and we're gonna see that it's gonna give us some different results. So this is the exact same settings and it gave us some slightly different results. I actually wanna see them side by side just so we can see the difference between these. They are almost the same, but you can see the color coloration is a little different. Canny is giving us a little bit of brighter or like more saturated colors. HED gave us less saturation just based off this image and these settings. So I don't know if it's always the case, but in this case, this is the results we got. And it, you'll see here the outline for this as well. Let's try open pose. This might not work with open pose just because it's a up close image. So if it really does detect the pose, I'd be very surprised. Oh, sick. The thing about open pose is that it's not good for an image like this where it's up close because it's trying to figure out where the limbs and everything is at. It detects it slightly here, but it, I think it is a bit confused. You can see like things like it tries to put like, I don't know if these are fingers or what it is, but I think open pose would be best for something like this. Let's try this instead. Yeah, the results are not great, but the skeleton, look at that. It's following exactly the pose that this person has right here which is very cool. So when I put the weight and the guidance strength all the way down, it seems to veer off into something that's not following the original image. I think at this point, this outline is not even taking effect and is just going based off the denoising strength down here. If I start to put the weight up, let's see what happens. Starting to see the Gatling gun here, it's not following exactly and it also made him white. So that just shows that when you put this higher, it actually tries to follow the original image and this outline a lot more, you see? And I brought the, the guidance strength to 0.5 and it made it look just sick. It made it look more like this, but it still has plenty of style in it. And this is basically the benefit of Control Net, that it gives you a lot more options to mess around with, not just the noising strength and CFG scale, but also the weight and the guidance strength of the outline. And this is, to me, this is definitely a game changer. And this is a level up. This allows you to follow the original images or footage and add some style to it. And hopefully one day we can get some very consistent results. When you export this, uh, you export it like you do every other export. Um, but you have to make sure that when you're using uh, control net, you make sure that you click these off right here. Once you remove these, you just come into here. So in the input, you put in the name of the folder where you have all the frames. And here you have another folder that's an empty folder and you put the address of that folder in here and then you export it. Then you get your PNG files, you put them into After Effects and you get your results. So I exported the animation and as you can see, it's still very jittery, but it keeps Look at how, how it does keep like the position so well. When it's up close and there's a little bit more subtle movements, it's actually keeping track of it so, so good. And right here, there's a bunch of jitteriness. Um, but I think stuff like that can actually be fixed in with uh, 
EB synth. I, I think we're not too far from getting just like almost perfect results. I, I also made one where, where I skipped every other frame and so it's a little bit smoother. Um, but still, there's quite a bit of jitteriness. I also ran one where I had tried to keep it as close as possible to the original so that the noising strength was lower and there's still a lot of jitteriness but it, it's, it's actually um, following the original video a lot better but as you can see, there is a lot of stuff that's happening here with his arm. A lot of his tattoos just transforming into different, just so many different things. And uh, yeah, it's not perfect, but uh, we're getting there. This is definitely one step forward to get some very consistent animations. I think we're not too far, probably within a few months or even a year. I really feel like we're not too far from getting some like really, really smooth animations. I know that uh, runway, uh, what is that called? Um, uh, there's this new thing that's gonna be coming out pr probably pretty soon. Uh, it's from runway, it's Gen 1. Uh, I believe that's the name of it. But uh, they're doing some some wild stuff with this AI video stuff. Um, look at this. This is like some disco diffusion kind of stuff right here. Man, I mean, this looks doesn't look good but it's getting, it's creating this from this and soon enough, it's, it's gonna turn into something that's very usable and like at a professional level. Um, like we're getting there, we're getting there. Soon enough, all this stuff is gonna start to look very smooth. It's insane. But this is definitely a step forward when it comes to getting some smooth, consistent animations with a very heavy style. I love that we can push the style slightly more with control net and have it be consistent without having to do like face tracking and stabilizing and all this stuff that I've done in previous videos to get good results. We're starting to be able to do that without having to do all those workarounds. So that to me is very cool. All right, everyone, hopefully this was useful for you. I will be experimenting more with control net and see other ways that it can be used for video. Um, there's still probably a lot of things to explore within it. So I'm going to be messing with it and I'm sure there's going to be updates and improvements. So there's definitely going to be a lot to talk about with this new tool. So yeah, experiment with it, try it out, see what kind of stuff you get. If, if you have any issues, uh, let me know in the comments. I will try to address it in the next video. Yeah. Thank you so much. Take care. God bless.